Okay, so I want to talk about um, outliers. Um, they're important, and um, I don't know if you guys have heard about outliers before, but they're values that are, you know, very far away from the general um, idea of your set of data. So, you know, are there values that are like really, really far away, or are there values that are, you know, not kind of regular in this set of data? So. How do we find these outliers? There's a process to actually calculate these outliers. And again, I'm going to use, let me go ahead and use this um, set of data that we had before because that's what we've been using. So we'll stay consistent um, with the picture and all that. So this time, I'm going to find the outliers and then um, I'm going to change my box plot and create a modified box plot which includes outliers. So Let's go ahead and start by finding the outliers. Here's your process. So we already have our five number summary, right? We already have Q1. Um, what the heck was Q1? Q1 was 34 and then Q2, 57, 79.5. So 34, Q2 was 57, and Q3 was 79.5. So, all right, let's go through the process to calculate our um, outliers. So step one. You have to um, okay. Step one. Okay, <clears throat> you want to determine your quartiles, right? Find your quartiles. We already did that. Find Q one, find Q two, find Q three. We already determined those. Step two. Find the inter what we call the interquartile range, interquartile range. This is your IQR, interquartile range, which is simply Q3 minus Q1. That's it, Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, you know, let's do that. Our IQR, let me do it in another color so you know I'm dealing with this particular example. So in yellow is this particular example. Q3 minus Q1, which is 79.5 minus 34. So 79.5 minus 34 is what we call the interquartile range or the IQR. And um, so in this case, 45.5. Okay, um, not hard so far. Uh, number three, step three. You want to determine, so evaluate or find 1.5 times your IQR. It's just a calculation. 1.5 times your IQR. So that's not hard. Just, you know, take, you know, in this case, 1.5 times your IQR, which is 45.5. Uh, let me do that on the calculator real fast. Times 1.5, which is a 68.25. 68.25 for this particular example. So just basic, basic arithmetic right now. Last step, number four. So um, an outlier, that's not Q, I meant O, an outlier, R, <laughs> okay, is any number either, um, greater than, Q3 plus 1.5 IQR or less than Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. So let me calculate that. Um, let me do the first one. Let me do, well, Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. Let me start there, because that's the smallest number. Q1, what was that? 34 minus um, 1.5 times IQR was, what was it? 68.25. So this is gonna be, oops, this is gonna be a negative number. Minus 34, negative 34.25. Oops. 
Let me calculate real quick before I talk about it. Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Q3 was, where is it? 79.5 plus 68.25. So take 68.25 and add to that 79.5. Okay, 147, yeah, 147.75. So any number for this example that is bigger than 147.75 is an outlier. Any number from the set of data that is less than negative 34.25 is considered an outlier. So I go back to the sample. There's nothing less than this because this is a negative number. So there's no outlier on the low end. But there is a number, um, 403, in the set of data that is bigger than 147.75. And that means that 403 is an outlier. 403 is an outlier. Okay, so um, to find the outlier, not every set of data has an outlier. Some of them have more than one. Some of them have low outliers and high outliers. But this kind of goes along with what we saw in the box plot too. It's like really skewed to the right. That 403 is pulling it really far to the right. So I would assume that it might be an outlier. And then based on my calculations, it was an outlier.